It all started on 4chan. A few years ago, around 2006, an anonymous user on 4chan left a post on one of 4chan's forums. It said, Hello. I worked hard on this game. Please play it, it is very fun. It also included a link to a RAR file on Mediafire. Most people would disregard the post due to its poor spelling, and if they did visit the link, they would see that the file was called Ed Identity, the game, and forget about trying it. But, the ones that did play it were in for one hell of a ride. Most of the reactions to the game were quite different than the type one might expect. What the hell? Holy crap man. That was too scary. Do not play. It is not what you think it is. And many other posts along the same topic. The post was removed a few months later because of the public reaction to the game. Also, the media fire file is no longer available, because the original uploader's account was shut down. What you are about to read is a description of the game. The information gained about the game was received by the various users of 4chan who were unlucky enough to have downloaded the game. In order to start the game, you must extract the RAR file into any folder. Attempting to run the game's executable file before doing so will result in an error message. Once extracted, the game can be launched by clicking ebedentitythegame.exe. The game will automatically enter full screen, and cannot be closed unless you press Alt and F4, close it with the task manager, or pressing the exit game button in the game. The game starts as what appears to be a poorly designed fan game. The title screen is an edit of a screen cap of the show and the words, play game, exit game, and the game, are edited onto it, more than likely using Microsoft Paint. The play game and exit game are clickable, and they do exactly what they say. Starting the game will jump to a black screen with a few blank areas to enter information. The game asks the player for their name, their cell phone number, and the player's address. The game states at the top of the screen that entering any of the information run will remove from the experience of the game. Once the player enters their info, they can begin the game by pressing a button that says play at the bottom of the screen. Pressing it will throw the player straight into the game. The game is in a first-person perspective, the player starts on the sidewalk of a poorly designed 3D cul-de-sac, the in-game music is an endless loop of the Ed Identity opening song, and at the bottom of the screen there is white text that acts as a dialogue box for the game. As soon as the game begins, the white text reads, Step right up and try our all new scam, air, trick. I meant magic trick. Only 25 cents. The game doesn't give the player any directions of how to play the game, so they must fiddle with the keyboard until they figure out the controls. WASD are used to control movement, the spacebar is used to jump, and moving the mouse moves the camera. Movement is slow, and jumping is floaty and doesn't go very high. Once the player figures out how to control the game, they'll eventually move towards the middle of the cul-de-sac, where a few characters and other objects are visible. In the center of the cul-de-sac are flat models of Ed, Eddie, Double D, Jimmy, Kevin, and Sarah. The models are the simple, flat models that are always facing the player no matter where the player stands. All the characters are standing around a poorly designed model of what appears to be a rocket ship. Moving close to it causes a clip from the TV show to play. The clip is a scene from Season 2, Episode 3 of Ed Identity called, Ready, Set, Ed. The clip is a scene of Ed stuffing all the kids into their rocket car, and Eddie enters to explain why Double D and Ed couldn't come with them. The clip's quality is poor, and it ends abruptly after Eddie finishes his explanation. After the clip ends, the player is back in control of the game, but now the player is in a small 3D box-like room. The player can't do anything at this point, but after 30 seconds or so, they will receive a text message on their phone, if they can receive messages, if not, the player must use Alt and F4 to exit the game, the message will say, type fast. The message is from a private number, and can't be messaged or called. Typing fast on the keyboard will cause the game to show another clip, but this time the clip is of old crash test footage. The audio is missing during the clip, and no sounds are playing. The footage plays once, then freezes on the last frame. Pressing any button on the keyboard will cause the game to return to play mode. But this time, all the textures of the box room's walls are replaced with the final frame of the car crash scene. In the middle of the room, Eddie and Double D stand next to each other. Approaching the two will make the white text on the bottom of the screen to change to say, We killed them Eddie. I know you idiot. Oh my goodness, think of their families. No, you moron, think of the quarters. After a few seconds, the textures of the room will be replaced with pure black and the text reads. 
you will pay for your sins. Then the game will freeze for a little bit, and put the player in a new room. This new room is a long, pure black hallway. After being in this room for a little bit, the player will receive a text message saying, Run. Some players wouldn't know what to do at this point, and quit. Other players will type the word run, and the game would play a voice clip of Double D crying that was taken directly from the show, and the ebbity opening music would stop playing. The white text at the bottom of the screen would now read, Run. If the player looks to one side of the hallway, they will notice a flat model of Double D slowly getting closer. But this wasn't the same Double D model from earlier. Double D was now black and white, his eyes were now edited to be black and red, and he had no mouth. Touching Double D at this point of the game would immediately cause the game to crash. Players that touched Double D claim to have heard footsteps outside of their rooms even if they lived alone. If the player moves away from Double D, when they reach the end of the hallway, the game will freeze and move to another location. This new area was a very tall room. The room wasn't very wide, but it went up very high. The white text at the bottom of the screen will now read, tap the space bar. Tapping the space bar will cause the player to constantly jump, and the player can now fly upwards by tapping the space bar. After a few seconds, a wide brown polygon will appear at the bottom of the map and slowly move upwards. Touching it will crash the game, but if the player flies all the way up to the top of the room, the game will change locations one last time. The player is where they started the game, in the cul-de-sac. But now, nobody is in the center of it. Only a guillotine stands in the middle of the cul-de-sac. The white text now says, in this horrible game now, but if the player does not touch the guillotine within one minute, they will receive 17 text messages that all say, end it. If the player idles any longer, they will receive a phone call. If they answer it, they will hear a reversed version of the ebbity opening, and once it finishes, they'll hear a man yell at the top of his lungs. Touching the guillotine leads the player to a menu screen that says, Congratulations! You beat Ebbenity the game! You will receive the making of DVD soon! Thanks for playing! Along with a button that allows the player to quit the game. And that is the end of the game. If the player looks into the game's files after you beat the game, they'll notice a new JPEG file called, Buttered Toast. It is a black and white photograph of an autopsy. The executable file for the game is also missing now. After the player beats the game, they'll receive a package about 3 or 4 months later. Only the first 50 players that beat the game received this package. According to a player that received it, the box was small, but smelled extremely bad. The cardboard on the small package was also wet, according to a player that received it. Within the package is a blank CD with, the making of Ed Ebenity, the game, written on it with Sharpie. If a player loads the disc into a computer, they will find an MP4 file called, The Making of. The file is a video. The video starts off with the Ed Ebenity opening sequence. After this, a white screen with the words, The Make of the Game, the screen remains like this for a few seconds, then cuts to the crash test scene featured in the game. The clip now has sound, but remains quiet until the car hits the wall, once it does the video will play screams that are so loud they can break the player's speakers. Causing the video here does not stop the screaming, and the video will force the computer to shut down after it ends. Players that watched the video have had strange occurrences afterwards. They will tend to hear their phone ring, even though nobody is calling. Some players claim to hear the reversed version of the Ed Ebenity opening from far away as an echo. When some players sleep, they'll wake up abruptly to the sound of footsteps or someone whispering, end it, although nobody is around. Some people even claim that all of the files on their desktop were replaced with the game's executable file. The game is no longer available on the internet, and the creator of the game still remains unknown.